point in my life where I hand on heart thought I was going to end up in a padded room. That's how bad it was. But it's fascinating that you're saying that setting goals and setting your mind on things and hard training is what set you back on track. You yeah. know, I, I don't know what you're like when there's no one in front of you, but standing here in front of you right now, I would say this is a, a healthy, vibrant guy. 100%. I've never felt better mentally strong, physically. I've training hard. I feel fit as a fiddle. You know, I, I wouldn't be here if I was anything wrong with me. But that's fascinating that most people think that to come back from a mental health issue like yours, you need psychiatric care and you need medication. And you're saying... You did it with setting goals and hard work. And the biggest thing we're missing here is I didn't I didn't do it with doctors and um, all them type of things. I done it with something way more powerful. God. So your faith and your belief. My faith and belief that God would make me better made me better. Almost and for like somebody the faith who, who don't have any faith will think, oh, this is nonsense or whatever, but... I'm living proof. Well, if you believe in something, yeah. I mean, just like you were talking about believing in pills that don't do anything, belief is a powerful thing. Whether Who knows what's behind that belief, but what you're saying is so powerful that you, just by virtue of changing the way you think about things, setting goals, working hard, you lifted yourself out of the worst depression of your life to the point where you were suicidal. 100%. And I never ever went back to that from this day to that, and it's been, it's been well over twelve months. That's pretty amazing. I mean, it's just ama it's a, that's an amazing thing for people to hear because there's a lot of people that rely heavily on antidepressants and medication. And they think that is the only way for them to be happy and for them to be not suicidal, not depressed. They need that medication, and for them to hear what you're saying, I think is a very powerful thing. It is, but. I'm no doctor. I'm not going to tell people to chuck away your pills and, right, and right, pray. Right. But it, it doesn't do any harm. What I'm saying, give it a whirl. Give it a try. It can't hurt you. Set yourself some goals. Think positive and uh, crack on. Do a bit of training. So from, from accomplishing your ultimate goal, beating Klitschko, becoming the heavyweight champion, and then falling into this deep funk, do you think you had to go through all this to come back again? I think so, yeah. I believe I was being tested to, to, to see what type of man I was and what type of character I had. And, you know, even before the depression, I didn't appreciate things. Nothing. Nothing was value to me. So even something I'd worked hard for. If I'd worked hard and, and saved up for a car, just say, for five minutes, they'd be OK, but then I wouldn't want it anymore. It was a piece of shit. So nothing mattered to me. I didn't value anything. Anything that I had and I'd worked hard for... And and everyone knows, like, what I have is blood money because I pay for him in face. And my body gets punched to pieces for what I have. So you'd think I'd appreciate things more than the next man, but I didn't appreciate nothing. I didn't appreciate anything. Anything I had or achieved, even world championships, anything, I thought, is that it? Is, is this that your, all? your whole life has yeah, been like this? Yeah. So I believe I was taught I was put down this road and I had to suffer all these things so I could understand when I had things good. Like today, I'm happy that I'm breathing fresh air and that I'm, I'm sat here in a mental, mentally stable way of thinking. I'm happy that I can go out and enjoy a dinner and just be normal, whatever that is. Mm. That's what I'm happy for. I'm one of the most, probably the most unique people you'll ever meet. I'm not, I'm not orientated by material things and, and all that sort of stuff. It means nothing to me. I don't even care about glory and honour. I don't care about legacies. I don't care about winning titles or, or, or medals. It doesn't matter. But when I set my mind to doing something, I'll do it. And every single time I've ever set my mind to anything, I've done it. Even the unthinkable things I've set my mind to, I've done it. I don't care about wanting what Deontay Wilder has in his position or whatever. I only want to beat him in a fight, that's it. You only want to beat him because it's so difficult. Not just that, because that's what I want to do. I want to set, your goal. Set, set me goal, beating Deontay Wilder. So do you think that that's the, your future, is just setting goals and constantly trying to achieve those goals? I think, I think I've got a bigger purpose now than boxing. Boxing's a sport and something that I've made a living out of for a long time. But I think that's a bigger picture. 
bigger than any any winning any titles, bigger than winning any any fights, any number of fights. I think my calling card in life is to spread the word on this this disease, a silent killer, a, a killer that's so ferocious that you can't see it or feel it from the outside. You could be suffering right now, but I won't be able to see it because I can't see into your mind. It's just so unusual that someone has that solution, that hard work, dedication, and setting goals is what lifted you out of the depression and made you appreciate life and made you appreciate all the, all the aspects of it. Yeah, I appreciate everything. You know, spending time with my family. I took it for granted before. I thought, all right, I spend time with my family anytime I want. I, I couldn't put into words what I went through. But let me just say, I wouldn't wish what I went through on my worst enemy. Not that I have any enemies. But if I did, I wouldn't wish it on a soul. Because I know how hard it is. And I know a lesser person... Maybe not have got through, and maybe not. A man without faith maybe would have took his own life. Now that you have gotten through, do you feel like you have the solution now to navigate the rest of your life? Yeah. I now know the secret for me, and everybody's will be different. But if I train every day and I'm staying in shape, then I'll be happy forever. The time I stop training, the time I balloon back up again, the time it all goes wrong again. And I know that. If you know something in your life, then you don't do it. And that's what I know. It's like a diabetic. If he goes and eats a lot of sugar, he knows it's going to make him ill. So he don't do it. So as long as I always stay by them guidelines, I know I'm going to be all right. And that's how she wrote. So as long as you... Well, that's the other thing too, right? The alcohol and the drugs exacerbate any sort of bad state that you have because you're going to feel like shit. Yeah. I'm not teetotal. Right. I've, I've had a drink since I've been back. I've been, I've been out with the lads, had drinks, whatever. And but your goals are still set and strong. Yeah. So but that's as long as, really what it is. Yeah. So from now on, you just have to continually set goals in your life. Set goals. Whatever them goals might be, they don't have to be massive goals, but they can be anything really. Anything that I want to do or I want to achieve or I want to go someplace or whatever, then I, I work towards it and set myself a goal. It's almost like a little treat or whatever. It's fascinating because no one's ever really connected that. I mean, people, people have made that connection in terms of like when they study happy people, one of the things they find about happy people is they're goal-oriented people. They set goals to accomplish those people. But nobody's ever really set that as a remedy for depression and for mental health issues. Setting goals, achieving those goals, that's the key to keep it going. I believe that's the case, yeah. After doing quite a lot of research on, on myself and experiencing it, and it, it works for me, and I find it works for a lot of people I speak to who's got the same problems. I get messages from all, all over the world from different types of sports people and different type of people asking for information and, and help on how I, I got through mine and what I did, and, and I'm, happy to, I'm happy to help. So if there's anybody out there who's struggling in silence, which a lot of people are, then I'm always here to help if I can. Well, it's such an impressive and inspiring message because you're doing it without medication. You're doing it just through positive thinking, through goal setting, and through healthy living. That's right. And I believe it's the best, best way to live anyway. Best way to live is fit and healthy. When you're out of shape and you feel unfit and you feel terrible, then nothing's going to go right for you. Right. But if you feel fit, you feel good. It's almost natural to feel depressed if your body is literally depressed. If... Every time I go to the gym and do a little bit of training, whether it be a lot or little, I always go out of a shower and then think, I feel great now. Training sets off an endorphin in your blood that mm -hmm. makes you happy. Contentment is the word we're looking for. Contentment doesn't come through material stuff, jobs, positions, fame, glory, money, anything. Contentment, you'll never find contentment while you're chasing that sort of stuff. My message would be, Look around yourself and be thankful for what you do have today. Don't look for what you don't have. You know, you've got to be, ha be happy with who you are. And a wise man once said, you've got to know yourself before you can know anybody else. Study yourself, try and understand yourself. Think what makes you happy and do that and what makes you sad. Don't do it. It's very simple, really. If something makes me sad now, then I'm not going to do it anymore. Take that out of my life. I don't want that. And if you know something's going to lead you down the wrong way and the wrong path in life, don't do it. Simple. Very simple. Set yourself small-time goals, long-time goals. Achieve them and move on. Now, how long did it take you for you to lose the weight? 
I started training in November 2017. 400 um, pounds. Yeah. And can't I, run. I got down to 275 pounds in my first fight back in June. And by August in my second fight back, I was 258 pounds. And I've, I've maintained that weight, 260, 258. That's your ideal weight? Yeah, from there to now. So... Um, what did you do differently with your diet? Like, what did you... I was eating a lot and drinking a lot. I just stopped all that sort of stuff. Like, my weight wasn't put on through being a normal person eating normally. My weight was put on through excessive drinking of lager. Mm. There's like 500 calories in one pint of beer. And I'd go out and I'd drink a minimum of 18 of those beers. <laughs> Followed by whiskey, oh. vodka... Everything else. Then I'd stop off on the way home and have pizzas, kebabs, chocolates. It was excessive living. If you put your body through torture, you can't expect to feel great. Right. So what I did was I started eating healthy, not drinking. And that was it, really. I just trained on a daily basis for a long period of time and, and at, at sensible and clean. You have to cut everything out. But if you want faster results, then, then you do it.